first on the side, I've been asked many, by many people, why haven't I updated my site in a while? I was kind of depressed when the Numbers TV show got canceled, and um, Tom was one of the people that really drove me uh, with the site for a long time. Almost every time I did a big update, he would call me up and ask me uh, various questions, people that I should bring in, and uh, that hit me kind of hard. So, I'm, I done something for the uh, exchange, this book on the Wolfram language. Uh, if you ask me what, the, what is the difference between the Wolfram language and Mathematica, I really have no idea. I mostly work in Mathematica, and I think it's the same thing, but I'm not totally sure. So here's an example of Mathematica, or maybe the Wolfram language. Uh, you can build this middle third set called the Sierpinski carpet. And a few months ago, Pi Day was coming up. And when you work at a math company, Pi Day is like a big meteorite coming at you at full speed. I needed something for Pi Day that was new. And I remembered something called the Wallace Sieve. This is something at our demonstration site. We just went over 10,000 math demonstrations. And if you take, instead of the middle thirds, if instead you take out the middle thirds, then the middle fifths, then the middle sevenths, then the middle ninths, and so on, you get this object that has a limiting area of pi. And I thought, well, that's pretty cool. Maybe I can build something with that for Pi Day. And then I had this idea, I had this mathematical intuition that if I scaled this up to the third dimension, instead of getting the area of a circle, it would get the volume of a sphere. And I was right. It worked. <laughs> that happens very rarely in mathematics, where you have a cool idea in mathematics, and it just works perfectly. Um, uh, well, I don't know about all dimensions, but it works in the third dimension. So this variant of the Minger crew, where you take out the middle third, middle fifth, middle seventh, middle ninth, and so on, this thing has the same volume as a sphere. And as another side, you can take integer triangles. I've been wanting to make a puzzle out of integer triangles, piecing them together like uh, jigsaws. And so to do that, uh, you can take a look at their areas, and usually there's a radical involved with their areas. And here's a few examples of different areas you can get from different triangles. And I had the thought, well, if I want to build this puzzle, uh, it's easiest just to find all the triangles that work together. So I built a catalog of triangles that work together, these so-called wheel graphs. And one thing I found, if you color by the radical associated with the area, every single case that works has one or two colors. So I call that the radical coloring conjecture. But to my actual talk. You have some points in space, no two further than one apart. What is the biggest volume you can constrain within n points? So if you look in two dimensions, here are some known answers. Um, the hexagon doesn't work as well as this thing found by Ron Graham. And they've gotten up to 16 points with that problem. Well, 16 isn't a lot for what I'm doing because I walked, went up into the third dimension and these were what was known as of a couple years ago. Here are the cases I solved. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 16, and 36 points. And I've also looked at, I've got pretty good solutions for everything up to 120. Here's one I haven't solved. I wanted to solve this one for D4, D12, but I haven't been able to solve it yet. Uh, it has lots of interesting symmetries here. These red lines are all the unit diagonals. These blue areas over here means that the face is completely supported by the opposite vertex. So the opposite vertex is um, distance one from all the vertices of the opposite face. And here are a bunch that I haven't solved yet, but that I have pretty close solutions to. Now, if those previous ones were all blue, that means all the faces were completely supported, you would have what I call a caltrip. No matter how you drop it on the floor, all the vertices are, are uh, all, every vertex of the bottom face 
is distance one from the upper vertex. So this thing is always pointing straight up, so it's good for what's called a caltrop, uh, the tetrahedron being the smaller one. Next smaller one. But going up, here is the next caltrop that I found. And you can use that to make a new solid of constant width with tetrahedral symmetry. So that's my talk. Uh, Stephen found out last week that I wasn't planning on attending. He said I should really come here, and he sent me. And I really appreciate him sending me here. Uh, thank you all that have uh, helped me so much over the years. I appreciate it.